And my my cavalry is doing pretty decently as well. Oh, got shot in the shoulder. That's not very nice. Well, technically the the arm. I'm not going to be able to swing that, but I don't really care because I don't, I don't actually have anything in that arm to begin with. Ooh, new boots! Yes! Hello and welcome back to our Duelist Adventures. And we're trying a little bit of a different tact in this particular situation with these poachers. And I'm going to try and see if I can... Oh, there we go. Good one. Okay, first good conversation option was a success. And now we're going to go for a 55% chance. I don't know whether any of this actually has any difference here at all, because I don't have any of these conversation options in highlighted green. So obviously that's not really going to make any difference. So, ah, crit critical fail. Come on now. Critical fail. That's a bit much. Oh, well, never mind. I'm here to do the job. I'm here to do the job that I agreed to do. Yes, I certainly am. So we're going to see if we can... Well, actually, <laughs> I'm wondering whether the turns have tabled in this particular aspect. Because usually I would hide like a very brave individual behind some buildings. But I'm actually thinking maybe we should just charge at them. You know? Maybe we should just charge at them and actually uh, have a little bit of bravado here because, well, uh, we outnumber them pretty significantly. However, the poachers are known for being relatively strong in terms of ranged combat. So I'm not sure whether we will just let our people get shot in the face. That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? That is indeed a bit of a problem. Okay, well, our archers are obviously firing back, which is pretty good. And my, my cavalry is doing pretty decently as well. Oh, got shot in the shoulder. That's not very nice. Well, technically the the arm. I'm not going to be able to swing that, but I don't really care because I don't, I don't actually have anything in that arm to begin with. I don't have a shield. I don't have anything that is load-bearing on that arm, so I don't really care whether I take damage in that one. Realism's sake, you know. And, uh, oh, get him. Yes. Get that guy too. Ah, no, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to. I don't think I'm going to be able to catch up to this guy. I got shot again in the same arm. Look at that. <laughs> that is actually hilarious. That is really, really hilarious. And I, I, I don't even know. I, I don't even know really. I, how, how do I do that again? Oh, there we go. There we go. Wait a minute. Look at that. It's almost exactly the same point just on the on the other side in the same arm it's good that bruce is not using his left arm to swing his weapon that's all i can say oh we have a bunch more poachers here hello let's tell my uh, guys to charge in here shall we get him yeah there we go get that guy too come on no don't get shot by that guy use use his friend's body as a as a way to protect myself from his attack and i'm gonna die here i think maybe nice Nice. Get him. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I'm surviving. I'm surviving. Can you believe it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was actually fantastic. I like it. I like it. Yeah, those are the... See, now, here's the thing. Those are the kinds of fights that I think are super fun. I hope you agree. If you don't, then that's absolutely fine. But I hope you agree about that because that is the kind of fight that I really like participating in. A fight where... You don't exactly know whether you're going to die, but it's not a foregone conclusion that you're going to win either. It's kind of an unknown quantity in every single aspect. And I think that that is really, really cool. Because in the one hand, you're running around and you think to yourself, okay, I've got a pretty decent amount of protection, you know? I mean, we have some decent armor right here. It's not the best, obviously, but it is going to protect us to a certain extent. However, it is still allowing us to move around in a relatively decent fashion too. So those kinds of things where I'm actually allowed to get into the battle without just getting murdered instantly, that's the kind of thing I really love. Uh, they're, they're super, super fun to do. All right, so I need to go and deliver this to Kuya as well. You, c you can already tell what I'm going to do. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Did I level up, by the way? Yes, I did. Look at that. I actually did level up. That's fantastic. Okay, so... I'm thinking uh, leadership, uh, what did I spec into before? I spec into scouting, didn't I? 
Okay, so I'm going to actually be specking into medicine here. Oh, nice. I like this change. All right, so for those of you that have not played Mountain Blade Warband, I'd highly recommend it. Obviously, it is a very old game now, but I'd highly recommend checking it out just because that's where Bannerlord came from and that's where, uh, that's where a lot of people say that Warband was the best Mountain Blade game from the past. So I'd highly recommend just trying it out. You know, you can pick it up on sale for about $5 usually. But anyway, point is, this is first aid, basically, from, from Warband. Character heals 30% of lost health points after each battle. That is amazing. Okay, so unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be taking this, even though this is absolutely fantastic to prevent yourself from being taken prisoner or not being able to participate in battles. This is a fantastic thing to take. However, I think I'm going to be taking self-medication because this increases character battle movement speed by 3%. three and generally, that is going to be something that I would much rather take. So I'm going to be specking into a little bit of medicine here. And then moving on. Um, unfortunately, uh, didn't I didn't really want to spe spend any points into medicine right now. But I kind of feel like it was somewhat necessary with the amount of battling we're doing. And um, I just kind of want to get that first perk, you know? Just get that first perk to increase our overall movement speed in battle as well. We're going to auto-resolve here against these 15 because auto-resolving in general is, uh, especially against such a small party, pretty much the go-to thing. And as you can see, it actually gives us a wide variety of different benefits in terms of looting, uh, not looting skill, in terms of medicine skill and in terms of tactics as well. Even though tactics is not actually going to be that useful to me in general, but still. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I did say that I wanted to try and find some of those southern slavers, but I, I decided that the best way for us to actually even get into a battle with them is to literally just go about by, go about my business normally, and then if we come across them in the course of doing that, then all very well and good, and that's absolutely fine. All right, so I did actually buy some additional desert horses, by the way, down at Askar. And I bought them for 245, I believe, each one. Obviously, because I have no trade skill, I can't see trade rumors or anything like that. But I, I, I believe that I bought them for 245. I spent about 6,000 total in buying desert horses. Now, bear in mind that, as you can see down here, my speed has dramatically increased as a result of me having so many horses. So I'm a little bit dubious about selling any of them, but we're going to sell 10 of them and then we're going to move on and we're going to see what we, what else we can do. We do have a number of other things that I could potentially... Yeah, does, does my brother need anything? Let me actually just have a look here. No, that's about the same. No, I think he's using a, a pretty decent... Um, torso piece at the moment, so it's probably not going to make any difference. Okay, so we'll just sell that as well. So there you go, 14,000, almost 14,000 from that. And I'm thinking we might actually want to buy a little bit of fish here as well. Let's buy some fish, let's buy some grapes, some dates, some beer, olives. Trying to increase my uh, steward skill just a little bit. And there you go. Look at that. Massive amounts of trade skill, but no skill point. Look at that. No skill point. Can you believe it? Yeah, I guess you can, because obviously they're, they're kind of a little bit... Uh, ooh, who's that? Southern Slavers. Oh, hello there. But yeah, they're kind of a little bit um, stingy, I suppose you could call it, about uh, distributing uh, skill points at this time at least, and uh, we're just going to level up a couple of these fellows. Unfortunately, I can't level up any of the Nomad Bandits, but we're just going to utilize them as much as we possibly can until that time where we're no longer able to and we have to get rid of them for some aspect or another. So, there we go. Okay, so we have 30,000 right now. I probably want to buy a workshop or get another caravan up and running because obviously, as you can see right here, I do have one... Don't I have one workshop, right? Yeah, I've got one workshop. It's a brewery in Azkar. It's making 95 out of grain. They have two grain villages nearby, don't they? One, two. Yeah, one, two. Okay. 
There's actually one over there that's Titus Sonala as well. So technically, oh wow, there's actually two Titus Sonala. So technically, if I get a brewery in Sonala, that would also make sense. So maybe it would be an idea for me to get another brewery there. Hmm, maybe it would be an idea. Who knows? Now, let's actually just take a quick look and see what's actually going on with this guy. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Ah, uh, I was thinking to myself, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe we'll, we'll see what we can do about, um, wait a minute, is he, is he faster than me? 5 point, th I'm moving at 5.3, he's moving at 5.3 as well, how is he, how is he catching me right now? He seems to me like he's catching me. I was a bit worried there for a second, because, uh, there's no way we'll be able to beat him. Not with his current army composition. His composition consists of... Uh, well, I just saw the 10 Master Archers and I was like, okay, yeah, no. Uh, we're probably not going to be able to beat that. Because if he had, like, my previous battle with uh, with one of their vassals in the Lost episode, if, um, if they had basically just recruits and slaves, I'd probably be able to beat them not too badly. But as it stands, no. Not, not in this case. I might actually be too slow to reach the, uh, reach the person I need to speak to right here. No, no, two days. Okay, Zandina Flat Cakes. Hello there. All right, let's see. Uh, there we go. Yes, this is all I have now. 578, that's absolutely fine. Gang leader needs weapons and all that stuff. Yeah, not going to be doing any of that. And we do have a couple of things going on here. Did I, did, have I leveled up my smithing as well, by the way? I don't think so. We still have 24? Yeah, we still have 24. All right, well, we're just going to be leaving that alone. We do have we do have some madmen. I'd like to fight them, if at all possible. I'd like to fight them because, as we know, crazed men level up into absolute beasts. And I would love to be able to see if I could... Yes, we got one of them taken prisoner. And hopefully we'll be able to persuade him to join us at some point. That would be nice as well. All right, so I think we're doing pretty nicely. Let's just take a quick look and see what uh, kinds of businesses are surrounding Kuyas, or uh, shall we say business options. It seems like not much. They've got fish. There isn't actually a fishery or anything like that. So, mm, not going to really be able to do anything in regards to building a, a workshop here. So, I think I'll, I'll probably go and we'll go to Sonala, and we'll probably build a brewery there. And then we'll probably also get another caravan or something along those lines. Do I have enough? Um, do I have enough uh, space? Yeah, I do have enough space. Oh, there's actually someone that's a prisoner? This guy's a... Oh, he got attacked by uh, the guy. He got attacked by the southern, southern slaver guy. Yeah, well, that is to be expected, isn't it? Yeah, that guy was actually pretty fast. So that makes me think that he had a lot of cavalry in his um, in his army, which is certainly making things quite difficult for us. Anyway, we're going to go in here. I uh, didn't want to go in versus the other looter parties because I was still somewhat injured. And I'd like to try and prevent myself from potentially dying and then, well, causing problems. <laughs> causing all kinds of problems for us. Okay, so otherwise this is just these are these are basically just looters, so I can pretty much just charge straight on in and we shouldn't have too many difficulties with them. Ooh, fifth okay, they're very close. Okay. I'm just gonna tell my people just to charge in. Just gonna tell that my archers I have very few archers for some reason. What's what's, what's going on with that? Alright, well, whatever the case, hopefully I'm not gonna get shot in the left arm again. That wound is still healing. Get him. Yeah, there we go. Ow. <laughs> in the leg. How dare you. How dare you hit Mr. Bruce in the leg. That's not very good. And now, all of a sudden, I'm reminded of Alfred from Batman. Because he t generally tends to say, Ah, Master Bruce, and so on. Okay, ah, there we go. Okay, we've eliminated all of them. And that is it. Okay. Well, that was easy enough, wasn't it? And, um, yeah, it seems like we're getting decent tactics skill, but obviously, as I've said before, tactics perks are not fully implemented just yet, so us being able to gain a couple of those is not really going to result in too much goodness happening, but I guess it's all right. I mean, it's not, it's not too bad. Okay, so we have 29 prisoners, probably going to be not taking any further amounts of them, just in case. Ah, uh, uh, he has escaped. Okay, that's fantastic. 
and aha there he is okay so let's just take a quick look at what else he has yeah as you can see he actually has one of those sheriffs he has a blood sworn warrior he has desert marksman he even has an ascendant of wrath what what is that what is that let me have a look okay <laughs> I'm, I'm going to back away slowly. I am backing away very slowly. Yeah, that guy really knows what's up. And I am not going to be fighting him anytime soon. Not. Uh, I, I hope someone takes him down a peg or two. That's all I can really hope for at this point. Because he is very much out of my league right now. And I will not really be able to do too much to him. Oh, yeah. Uh, we want to form a caravan, but I need to get a... Wait a minute, let me actually just have a quick look at his skills. Okay, so he has athletics. So I guess that should be good enough. Skip the pleasantries. There we go. Thank you very much. And I should have just quick talked with him, but that's absolutely fine because we can just leave anyway. So it's not too bad. Otherwise, I am going to be speaking to this guy because I would like to purchase a brewery in Sanala as well because there is a... Oh uh, uh, yeah, I'd like to get a caravan. There we go. But yeah, I'd like to get a brewery. I think they do have one. Yes. Oh, it's right here. Perfect. That is absolutely... Oh, they've got two? Wow. Okay, it must be really good to have uh, breweries in this area then by the looks of things. Okay. Well, hopefully I'm going to be able to purchase this. 14,000. That's pretty... That's pretty expensive. Yeah, that's pretty expensive. Hopefully it's going to actually give us a decent amount. Because it's a, a pretty significant outlay for us right now. But, oh well. Can't really do much about that. Let's just continue to level these guys up into righteous citizens. Manhunters, of course. And I'm actually qu quite thankful that we have so many horses in my inventory right now. Yeah, my prisoners are slowing me down quite significantly. So I'm hopeful that I might be able to find a... Uh, training troops. I know people have said that training troops is not that bad anymore but in the past i've kind of had a um kind of a little bit traumatized by that quest so kind of don't really want to um god this guy is li literally look at this this guy is absolutely destroying my entire caravan force pretty much uh, that was the one i literally just got as well by the way uh yeah, I mean, that's the reason why caravans are quite risky. They are quite risky. Okay, let's uh, try and escort this one then. This is going to be quite harsh. Almost a thousand gold per day. Okay, I hope you go this way. Yes, you are indeed going this way. Thank goodness. Okay, wait a minute. Woo, hello. Okay. This is going to be problematic. If, if we have to fight, and there's no way we're going to be fighting this one. There's no way I will be able to beat that desert cultist. Not in a million years. 185 in that person's army. Never, ever going to be able to defeat that. Not at least right now. We would probably be able to do it if we had about 30 master archers, potentially. Dependent on their army composition, of course. But if they have primarily really, really strong units, like we've seen so far... It's going to be problematic. Now, these are, of course, just looters, so I don't really have to worry too much. I'm going to tell my cavalry to charge in. Oh, it seems like I only have cavalry. I don't have any horse archers or anything like that, so don't need to command them or anything. Get them. Oh, get... Yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. Nice. Oh, these are actually Bedouin rovers, so they're not actually um, regular looters. Yeah, I should have realized that from the armor, but oh well, never mind. Not too bad. Easy, easy victory for us. And now, cross your fingers and hope that we're not going to be beset upon by the very, very powerful army that is on the horizon. Let's have a look, actually. Desert Immortals. Whoa, okay. Uh, let's have a look at Desert Immortals, shall we? I feel like they're going to be a pretty fun thing to look at. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, 245 in bow skill. And there are how many of those? Only four of them. Yeah, they only have four of those. So it's actually not even that, uh, not even that scary. Well, this is 
This is somewhat problematic. Yeah, this is this is definitely problematic. Uh this caravan is is done. Run, 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 caravan. Yes, you're much faster than them. Come on, surely you're much faster than them. You are only eleven. Four Yes, you are point two faster. Yeah, there we go. Come on. You can escape. Yes, it seems to be working. Okay, come on now. I'll protect you from any looters, but I can't protect you from 187 desert cultists. <laughs> uh, go, go, go. Yes. Okay, we're almost... Oh no, we need to go to Iakis, not Habya. Okay, come on now. When, did she, when is she going to give up? Are you serious? When are you going to give up? Okay, well, let's just uh, very quickly just do a little bit of an auto-resolve there just to get a little bit more charm skill and everything because you actually do gain charm skill by helping out people even in trivial battles. So that's actually pretty cool. Trained youths. Is it worth it? No, not in my opinion at least. We'll take all the loot, of course. And then we'll just level up a couple of our friends here too. Ah, uh, yeah. I'd love to be able to fight these desert cultists, but mark my words, we will gain enough strength to be able to do that. It is just going to take us a little bit of time. Okay, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, I'm faster than you, so, you know. Don't bother me, please. Okay, where, where? Oh, we failed it? Are you serious? Where were they actually going, though? That's the thing. Where were they actually going? Kasira. No, surely not. That's 77 days ago. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This one. No, it was moving to Iakis. Oh, wait, no. No, it was moving here. Right, okay, so I went the wrong way because I thought that what it was doing is it wanted to go to Iakis and it didn't want to go this way. And it was actually going over here. So my bad. That was my fault entirely. But what am I supposed to do if this guy is literally bearing down on us with a huge, huge amount of troops. And I can barely get away from them in that time. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do about that. But oh well. Never mind. I guess uh, I'll take the relation hit. I will definitely take the relation hit on that. That was definitely my fault. All right. Oh well, never mind, never mind. Okay, so we're, we're, we are given a couple of these. Ooh, Desert Horses actually sell for a pretty cheap price here. I'm liking it. Very good, okay. Let's just sell these things. And I do need to do some smithing as well. Once we get over to the destination for this task, we will be doing a little bit more smithing. I will do most of the waiting off screen, of course, because that's just... Uh, it's just terrible. It's just absolutely terrible. Okay, I'm going to go to Iakis real fast because I want to see if I can offload a couple of these Azurai horses for a decent profit. No, actually not. Look at that. Yeah, that's pretty awful. Okay, so Iakis does not need horses. What about Kasira? Maybe Kasira needs horses because usually I offload them at Sanala. But I'm actually traveling to Sanala at this point. So I, technically what I could do is I could just sell them to the marketplace there. And that would make the most sense. But I can't take too long, you see. Yeah, this is this is a bit better. There we go. 6,500. That's, that's a decent amount. And then we'll go to Sanala real fast. All right. So I only had one day left. Leadfoot Nolden is going to be very, very pleased with us indeed. Well, technically not that pleased because obviously I sold half of his stuff. But yeah, there you go. All right, so let's go into the smithy real quick. I'm just going to refine a couple of pieces. Oh, nice. We actually made it to 25 just with those few uh, few refinements. That's great. Okay, so, oh, look at this. I actually have 55 in scouting, and I forgot to get this. All right, so this is going to be very useful. Really? Is it? This, what? Okay, question, question. What's going on with this? You see the secondary uh, secondary effect here? Once per day, when you enter a village, you have a 50% chance to increase the clan's relation with a notable by one. Okay. Don't know what the thought process was behind making this a percentage chance. I think that if you're going to get a perk, it should either be 100%, 
because one relation is nothing. I mean, it's not really going to do much. You need, um, in some cases, you need 60 to 70 relation with a particular NPC to be able to recruit all of their units. So having a 50% chance once per day, no less, to increase your clan's relation by one with one person in that village. I think that that is absolutely ridiculous. I don't think that this is a good skill whatsoever. This needs to be changed to not a 50% chance, but this needs to be changed to 100% chance, or it needs to be changed so that it increases the clan's relation with everyone in that village by one or by two or by three, dependent on what you want, obviously. But maybe there are some other things later down the line that actually increase it a little bit more. Because early on, this is the kind of thing you want. You want to be able to increase your recruitment spread, if you know what I mean. You want your you want to be able to recruit as many powerful units as you can get your hands on, and being able to increase your relation is definitely worth it. Now, here's the thing. Both of these secondary effects in my opinion at least. When you enter a town, you have a 50% chance to increase the clan's relation. Okay, so this is much better in my opinion because you're most likely always going to be entering towns. But it's once per day again. I, uh, is it just me? Maybe it's just me, but I personally feel like this is a, a terrible, terrible skill. I don't know. I feel like it needs to be a 100% chance or it needs to be some something different because it just feels not impactful enough. But... Maybe I'm complaining for nothing. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I, I just know that I'd do it a little bit differently if I were to um, do the perk. But it's not me. It's not me doing it. All right. So let me actually just have a look here. Ooh, this guy is this guy's associates. Should we do that? We're captured by bounty hunters. Should we do this? I mean, it's going to increase our criminal rating. Maybe it's not a good idea to do that because we're trying to be pretty honorable in this playthrough. So... Maybe it would be an idea to do that. But you saw there. Did you see what happened? I entered the town. And I gained one relation. With that guy. Now, I'm going to go back there in, in a second. Um, for a variety of reasons. But I'm going to go back there in just a second. Just because I want to I wanna see what happens with the recruitment screen. I'd like to go into the recruitment screen and see what's going on. Okay, this is actually a pretty cool fight. Because what I'd like to do is fight these desert bandits right afterwards. So let's go in here. I want to get my one-handed skill to 100. If I can get my one-handed skill to 100, this is going to be absolutely fantastic. But I just want to uh, see what's going on with the relations in that town. Because I want to see the thresholds that we require in terms of relation levels that will allow us to recruit every single unit from that town. And... and it will maybe uh, impart to you a little bit better as to what my point is in regards to um, the whole relation game thing. And that's the thing. I don't want it to be easy. You know, I don't want it to be super, super easy to gain relation with people. But I just want it to make sense. Because at the moment, uh, a 50% chance in my opinion, I don't know I don't know why, why it would be 50% chance. Because if I've done work for them in the past or something like that then surely it would make sense to I, I don't know uh, to, to kind of foster a good relationship with that person surely they would be happy to see us every single time we go into the town I don't know I don't know I mean that's the point it's not really re it's not really realistic is it so uh, it's a bit of a weird um, weird situation to be in I suppose but anyway just take all the loot right there and now we're going to be fighting those desert bandits so I'm, I'm a little bit worried about fighting these desert bandits that's why I'm kind of being a little bit um, dubious here but I'm going to be recruiting this this crazed man and I won't be taking anyone else all right here we go come on desert bandits I am surely faster than you all right, so they have about the same combat strength as the as that looter party that we just fought, and there were significantly more of them. So obviously these desert bandits are going to be quite powerful to to uh, fight. Although that's the thing, I don't really need to worry about dying because obviously this is not the Iron Man challenge or anything like that. So I can I can take more risks and I can kind of be a little bit more audacious with my movements and everything. So I don't have to be 
super scared or anything like that about taking damage. So I might be able to do a little bit more to impact the result of the battle, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about it. Anyway, let's just tell everyone to charge in, apart from the archers, of course. And let's try and do some damage. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. I've got myself into a bad situation right here. Oh, dear. Yeah. Uh, as I was saying, oh, uh, yes, I don't have to worry about being so cautious. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, terrible. Well, that was easy enough, wasn't it? We did gain a pretty significant amount of tactic skill, so I suppose that's good. And we do get... Oh, actually... Yeah, not bad. Pretty decent amount of prisoners, and we're now capped out at 49 prisoners. So I suppose a good thing for me to do would be to check out pretty much every village and then just see what's going on. Oh, there's a bunch of other looter parties over here. I should probably go back over here at some point and see what we can do about uh, tackling another bandit hideout. Oh, yes. Leave me alone with these board games. Thank you very much. Ooh, wait a minute. Did you see that? This guy has taken damage. He's lost units. But what kind of units has he lost? Does he still have those Desert Immortals? Or, or was that the... No, that wasn't the guy with the Desert Immortals. That was the guy with the Ascend Ascendant of Wrath. Yeah, as you can see, he's also got Sheriffs. Roaming Gladiators. 12 Master Archers now instead of just 10. So, indeed. He has... Uh, Done something there. Okay, so we increased our relation by one with the smith. Okay. So I'm going to take this guy into my party right now. But yeah, what we're going to do is I'm actually going... I don't even need to go and uh, go to the other town to make my point here. So what we're going to do... I've got one relation with this guy, right? Okay, so let's recruit troops. Okay, so what do I need to be able to recruit his highest tier? I need 60. <laughs> All right, so at a minimum, if I get one relation with this one NPC every single day, that is very unlikely, of course, because it is indeed a 50% chance. So do bear that in mind. So let's say that at a minimum, if I do get 100% chance every single day, it's going to take two in-game months of me coming back to this exact town and having the exact NPC gain the relation to, to gain the amount of relation that I need to get his highest max unit. Yeah. Can you see now why I think that that skill is really bad uh, I think that needs to be uh, that needs to be reworked or something at least in my opinion Ooh, new boots yes I, I don't know why I'm so excited about new boots why am I so excited about new boots I don't know but yes new boots I am very pleased you know I'm not actually that um, shall we say uh, not that I don't feel that negative about this um, this particular party right here I feel like I can probably take him reasonably soon and i'm talking about once all of my low tier units have leveled up of course i might need to spend a little bit of time off screen just literally going and auto resolving with a bunch of um with a bunch of looters and stuff because obviously uh that's kind of uh, a little bit of busy work and i don't really want to show you that all the time so we're just going to sell all those guys because i'd like to gain, uh, gain some skill in roguery and it kind of makes sense for me to do that and otherwise we're going to go into the smithy now oh actually did i spec my point oh i completely forgot with my ranting oh yes lovely okay so efficient charcoal maker is what i will take that is in my opinion the best one to go for and now I can make three charcoal for two hardwood, which is great. Uh, wait a minute. That's changed. Yeah, that's changed. Because it used to be that you would use three hardwood for two charcoal? Or the other way around? I'm actually not sure, because that's changed as far as I'm aware. Hasn't it? Maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, I think, I think it has. I think it has, but this is much better. This is severely much better, actually. That is very, very cool. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's a good change. That's a very, very good change. Okay, so let's just get a whole bunch of this. Unfortunately, I'm now out of energy again. <laughs> and 
Uh, I guess we'll just head onward now. But um, yes, unfortunately, this companion right here is not very good at what we want him to do because he is continually getting himself taken prisoner. And I spent 10,000 on his caravan for basically nothing. So that kind of uh, put a bit of a spanner in the works for me. But I guess I can't really do much about it right now. All right. Well, what I will be doing is I'll be doing some uh, off-screen progression just a little bit. I will maybe do a couple of tasks, but only if we have to fight like a bandit party or go into a bandit hideout or something like that, then I'll record that and uh, and indeed you know show you that. Um, but otherwise, I'll just uh, continue to do those little things that we do to try and gain some more power. Oh, look at this, though. We ha I actually have an attribute point. That's great. Okay. So I'm thinking we'll probably spec another little point into medicine. And then we'll go for another point into vigor. Because I would like to level up my one-handed skill even faster, if at all possible. So we're going to try and max out, or at the very least, get to about 8 in vigor. So the next attribute point I spend, 8 in Vigor, is going to be pretty good. Because if I do end up leveling Smithing Skill, then you can actually increase your Vigor by taking the Vigorous Smith perk. And I believe that there's also another perk later down the line that also gives you a little bit more Vigor. Is that true? No, it doesn't seem like it. But you can actually get a Focus Point to one-handed and two-handed if you get really, really late on into the tree. Now, that's another thing. I personally feel like this perk should be way earlier in the tree, because if you're focusing on one-handed and two-handed, you're going to literally put all your focus points in those things to try and level them up as fast as possible, because being good at combat is actually a really important deal. Um, is there actually, wait a minute, is there actually a, a tournament? Ah, there's no tournament. I thought if there was a tournament, I'd actually do that right now, but. Instead, I, I guess I'll just end, up, end the episode off here. And so, if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like. It is greatly appreciated. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.